Hello there everybody and welcome back to another EDH gameplay video brought to you by Affinity 4 Commander. My name is Martin and today marks our 100th gameplay video uploaded to the channel. I can't believe that our hobby has made it this far and want to thank each and every one of you for watching our videos. It really means the world to us that you would take the time out of your day to watch our content, so thank you. And as always... I'd like to personally thank all of the absolutely incredible patrons listed on screen for their heartwarming generosity. We wouldn't be able to continue making videos such as these without your support, so thank you. Also, if you decide to make a purchase from any of these websites, then be sure to do so via our affiliate links in the video description. It won't cost you anything extra, but it really helps out the channel. And if you haven't already, then go and check out altersleeves.com where you can find thousands of super cool designs on perfect fit sleeves to really bling out your decks. Just be sure to quote us as the ones who sent you. But that is enough of that, let's take a look at those opening hands. I am playing my Edgar Markov Vampire Tribal deck, which has experienced a number of upgrades since it last appeared on the channel. Never fear though, the deck still runs a hefty number of Lords and Anthem effects, as well as a heckload of removal spells for dealing with my opponent's pesky permanence. I keep an opening hand consisting of Swords to Plowshares, Legion Lieutenant, Commander's Sphere, Bloodline Keeper, Ash Barons, Temple of Malice, and Temple of Triumph. Tim is playing his lateral Blade of the Elves Elf Tribal deck, which aims to flood the board with as many nature-loving forest dwellers as physically possible. Yes, this deck focuses on strength in numbers and includes multiple board pumping spells to increase the army of weenies damage output. Tim keeps a starting hand of Elvish Mystic, Quarian Ranger, Saw Ring, Village Rite, Arcane Signet, Dark Confidant, and Forest. Newcomer to the channel Nev is playing his Fabine Boss's Confidant token production deck which seeks to take full advantage of his commander's haste providing ability. Similarly to Tim, Nev looks to put as many creatures onto the battlefield as quickly as possible, however he also runs a respectable amount of disruption spells as well. Nev's starting hand contains Beast Within, Oars of Advocate, Outpost Siege, a Plains, a Mountain and two Forests. And finally Steven is playing his Ray Han, Last of the Abzan, and a shy Ojutai Dragon Speaker plus one plus one counters deck. Like most counter focused decks, he has included a number of spells that increase the amount of counters his permanents can produce, but the addition of blue to his deck allows him to run a decent number of control spells as well. Steven keeps a starting hand of Rest in Peace, Chromatic Lantern, Crows in Grip, Bastery's Lieutenant, Gavany Township, Godless Shrine, and Prairie Stream. I win the die roll and start things off by playing Temple of Triumph. I scry, keeping the top card of my library where it is, and pass to Nev. Nev plays a plains and passes. Tim plays a forest, casts Soul Ring, casts Arcane Sickness, and casts Elvish Mystic. Bye! Oh, so that's an explosive start. With five mana on board turn one, he ends his turn. Steven plays Prairie Stream and passes to Martin. In my turn, I play Arid Mesa, paying a life to sacrifice it and search my library for Godless Shrine. I put the land into play untapped, paying 2 raw life to do so, and then cast Legion Lieutenant. My commander's eminence ability triggers, creating me a 1-1 vampire token, meaning that I just put 4 power onto the board for 2 mana. Value. Out of mana, I pass the turn. Nev plays a forest and taps out to cast Gala Greeters before passing. Tim plays a forest and casts his commander, Lathril, Blade of the Elves. Not yet finished, he casts Quirion Ranger and moves to combat, where he attacks Steven with his Mystic. With no creatures to block, Steven takes one damage, and Tim ends his turn. Steven also plays a Godless Shrine, paying two life to have it enter untapped and then cast Rest in Peace. R.I.P. Gideon. The fetch land in Martin's graveyard is exiled, and Steven passed the turn to him. 
I begin my turn by playing a Temple of Malady and choose to keep the top card of my library where it is. Moving to combat, I attack Steven with my Lieutenant, dealing him 2 damage, and pass the turn. In his turn, Nev plays a Mountain, and then casts Alls of Advocate. This triggers his Gala Greeter's ability, and Nev chooses to create a tapped treasure before ending his turn. Tim starts his turn by moving straight to combat, attacking Steven with Lafril. Still lacking creatures, Steven has no choice but to take the 2 damage, and Tim creates two 1-1 one, one Elf Warrior tokens with his commander's ability. In his post-combat main phase, Tim plays yet another forest and passes to Steven. Steven plays Gavany Township as his land for turn, and then casts one of his commanders, Rayhan, Last of the Abzan. Out of mana he passed the turn, and Martin responds this by basic land cycling Ash Barons. He searches his library for a swamp, puts the land into his hand, and proceeds to his turn. In my turn, I play the swamp that I just tutored for, and cast Chromatic Lantern. Not wishing to attack, I end my turn. Ores of Advocates' ability triggers in Nev's upkeep, and each player chooses to put two plus one plus one counters on one of their creatures in this way. Next, Nev plays a mountain, and casts Outpost Siege. He chooses the Dragon's Mode, and passes to Tim. Tim responds to this by casting Village Rites, sacrificing an Elf token as the additional cost. He draws two cards, and moves to his turn. In his turn, Tim moves straight to combat, where he attacks Steven with Lathril. Unable to block the menacing Elf, Steven takes 4 damage, and Tim creates 4 more Elves. By Urza they multiply quickly. Safe behind his wall of pointy-eared blockers, Tim passes the turn. In Steven's turn, Martin points out that Tim's only source of black mana is Arcane Signet, and Steven comments that he'll have a way to remove it next turn. For now though, he plays Pull of Mystery, scrying the top card of his library to the bottom. He then casts a Chromatic Lantern of his own, and ends his turn. I start my turn by casting Commander's Sphere, and then move to combat. Here I follow in Tim's footsteps, attacking Steven with both of my vampires. Steven declares no blocks, taking 6 damage, and I pass to Nev. In Nev's upkeep, everybody once again accepts the Advocate's deal of plus 1 plus 1 counters, and Nev plays Castle Embereth. Next, he casts Cabaretti Ascendancy and moves to combat, where he attacks Martin with Gala Greeters. Martin takes 5 damage, and Nev passes the turn. Tim begins his turn by moving straight to combat, attacking me with all of his creatures except for Elvish Mystic. Lacking any blockers, I take the 12 damage, and Tim makes another 4 elves of his commander. Honestly, this is getting a little silly now. Once again keeping all of his mana open, Tim ends his turn. Steven plays Sandstep Citadel as his land for turn, and staying true to his word, casts Cross and Grip. He targets Tim's Arcane Signal with a spell, and given that it has split second, Tim is unable to respond by casting a spell to save it. Unlucky, buddy. His oath fulfilled, Steven passes to Martin. I play a mountain, and then move to combat. Here I once again attack Steven with both of my creatures, and he blocks Legion's Lieutenant with Rayhan. The Vampire is vanquished, and Steven takes 4 damage from the unblocked token. The loss of my creature doesn't bother me at all though, as in my second main phase, I cast Merciless Eviction. I exile all creatures from the board in this way, and Nev chooses to deal 2 damage to Tim with his Outpost Siege's triggers. With a much emptier looking battlefield, I pass the turn. Cabaretti ascends the triggers in Nev's upkeep, and he chooses not to reveal the top card of his library, putting the card on the bottom instead. He then moves through his first main phase, combat, and to his second main phase, where he plays a forest and casts his commander, Thabine, boss's confidant. This allows Nev to end his turn without triggering his commander's parlay ability, preventing the rest of the table from drawing any cards. Smart move. Tim plays Mana Crypt and casts Seedborn Muse. Good job you got rid of all those elves last turn. I know, right? 
happy with his play, Tim passes to Stephen, and I respond by casting Swords to Plowshares, exiling the troublesome spirit. Tim gains two life, weeps, and Stephen proceeds to his turn. Stephen starts his turn by casting Cultivate, searching his library for a swamp and an island. He puts the former into play tapped, the latter into his hand, and then plays the island as his land for turn. Not yet finished, Stephen casts his second commander, Ishai, Ojitai Dragon Speaker, and passes. In my turn, I cast my commander, Edgar Markov, and Stephen puts a plus one plus one counter on his Dragon Speaker. Moving to combat, I attack Tim with my commander, who puts a plus one plus one counter on himself before dealing Tim five damage. With a single mana open, I end my turn. Nev once again moves the top card of his library to the bottom with his Ascendancy and casts Secure Tribe Elder. Stephen puts another plus one plus one counter on his commander and Nev moves to combat. Feybind's parlay ability triggers and everybody reveals the top cards of their libraries. One land is revealed, creating Nev a 1-1 citizen token and three non-land cards are shown, giving all of Nev's creatures plus three plus three. Everybody then draws the cards that they are revealed, and Nev activates his castle's ability. His creatures get a further plus one plus O, oh, and Nev attacks Tim with his commander and hasty citizen. Tim takes a whopping 12 damage in this way, and Nev passes to Tim. Tim begins his turn by playing Woodland Cemetery, and then remembers his mana crypt trigger. He takes no damage from the artifact, which he then uses to help recast his commander. Not yet finished, Tim casts Findhorn Elves and passes the turn. Stephen plays Blossoming Sands, gaining a life, and then casts Juniper Order Ranger. Not yet finished, he casts Peer, Imaginative Rascal, choosing not to search his library for Toothy. Stephen's Ranger's ability triggers, putting two plus one plus one counters on himself and Pia, thanks to the Rascal's ability. I can see this getting out of hand very quickly. Moving to combat, Steven attacks Nev with his Shy, and unable to block, he takes 5 damage. Pleased with his board state, Steven ends his turn. In my turn, I play Voldoran Estate, and then cast Bloodline Keeper. Edgar's ability triggers, making me a vampire, and I move to combat. Here I attack Nev with Edgar, putting a plus one plus one counter on all of my creatures, and Nev blocks my commander with Sakura Tribe Elder. He then sacrifices the Snaky Shaman to its own ability, putting a Plains into play tapped from his library, and with nothing more to do, I pass to Nev. Nev looks at the top card of his library, leaves it where it is, and draws it. Next, he casts Grand Crescendo, where X is 6. He makes 6 1 1 citizen tokens, and all 8 of his creatures become indestructible until the end of his turn. Nev then moves to combat, and Martin responds to this by casting Crackling Doom. Not wanting to lose his commander yet again, Tim responds to this by casting Might of Old Crosser, targeting his Findhorn Elves. With that other way, Nev, Tim, and Steven all take 2 damage, and Fabine. Findhorn Elves and the Shy are all sacrificed. Two commanders dealt with for only three mana? Don't mind if I do. Outpost Siege then triggers and Nev has it deal Martin one damage. Devastated by the loss of his commander, he passes the turn. Tim once again succeeds his Mana Vault trigger and casts Priest of Titania. Next he casts Elvish Archdruid and ends his turn. Steven starts his turn by casting Gave, Guru of Spores, who ends with 8 plus 1 plus 1 counters thanks to the combined effects of Peer and Juniper Order Ranger. The Ranger also gains 2 plus 1 plus 1 counters, and Steven moves to combat, where he attacks Nev with the aforementioned Knight. Nev blocks the single citizen, taking 0 damage and dealing 1 damage to Steven with Outpost Siege. With four mana open, Steven passes to Martin. In my turn, I play Marsh Flats and immediately pay one life to sacrifice the land and put a Plains into play from my library. Next, I cast Herald's Horn, naming Vampire, and then cast Olivia, Crimson Bride. 
only rest in peace hadn't exiled your whole graveyard. Ugh, don't remind me. I make a vampire token and move to combat, where I attack Nev with Edgar and Steven with Olivia and Bloodline Keeper. Edgar puts a plus one plus one counter on each of my vampires and Nev blocks my commander with a single citizen. Before damage occurs, I activate my keeper's ability, transforming him into Lord of Lineage. This gives my vampires plus two plus two, and Steven takes 13 damage. Talk about a near death experience. Nev deals one damage to me of outpost siege, and pleased with my position in the game, I pass the turn. Cabaretti ascendancy triggers in Nev's upkeep. Arnie puts Master of Ceremonies into his hand from the top of his library in this way. Next, he recasts Fabine and moves to combat. Everybody parlays, revealing the top cards of their library to be two lands and two non-land cards. And Nev makes two citizens as a result of this. All of his creatures then get plus two plus two, and Nev swings all seven of his tokens at Martin. How rude. Martin blocks two of these creatures with his vampires, taking 15 damage from unblocked creatures. However, Nev decides to deal him two damage with his outpost siege triggers, reducing Martin's life total to zero. I can't even be mad about it. That was a super spicy way to beat me. With one opponent down, Nev ends his turn. Tim once again succeeds on his mana crypt trigger, meaning that it hasn't dealt him a single point of damage all game. Now that is impressive. He then casts someone as Pact, searching his library for none other than Kratohoff Behemoth, and puts the beast into his hand before casting it. Each of Tim's creatures get plus four plus four and trample, and he sends all of them in Steven's direction. Steven responds by removing four plus one plus one counters from Gave, creating four sapperlings in this way. Each sapperling enters with two plus one plus one counters, and Juniper Order Ranger gets eight plus one plus one counters in this way. Steven then proceeds to block Lathra with three sapperlings, Priest of Detainee with Gave, and Elvish Archdruid with Peer and his fourth sapperling. Unfortunately for Steven though, this isn't enough to stop him from taking lethal damage. However, he does succeed in destroying Lathril and Priest of Titania on his way out. Well, at least that is something. With only two players remaining, Tim passes to Nev. Nev looks at the top card of his library, decides not to reveal or move it, and draws. Next, he plays Exotic Orchard, which he then used to cast Beast Within, targeting one of his own citizens. What madness is this? Nev replaces one of his 1-1s with a 3-3 beast, essentially increasing its power and toughness by 2, and Nev deals 1 damage to Tin with Outpost Siege. That card is really doing work. Moving to combat, Nev and Tim both parlay, revealing one land and one non-land card. Nev makes a single citizen, and all of his creatures get plus one, plus one, followed by an additional plus one, plus O oh, when he activates Castle Ember. With lethal damage on board, Nev turns his creatures sideways, winning himself the game. Well, that is it for our 100th game. I hope that you enjoyed watching Nev claim victory with his barely upgraded precon deck. Don't forget that you can help to support the channel in four quick and easy ways. Liking this video, subscribing, hitting that bell icon, and leaving us a comment, I read every one. And if you really like us, then consider checking out our Patreon page, where you can find exclusive rewards such as custom tokens and playmats for as little as a dollar a month. That's it for now though everyone, we'll see you next time. Stay awesome!